Hello, welcome to the Creative Writing Life Podcast. How's it going? And you are? <laughs> yeah, I'm Justin. It's been a while since we recorded one of these. <laughs> and I'm Paul, that's right. <laughs> Yeah, so this we are. This is our uh, Austin Film Festival in review episode, which of course is about a month after the fact that Austin occurred. But there are reasons for that. Uh, Justin's got some stuff going on, and lucky me, I got COVID as a result of going to Austin, even though I was fully vaccinated. Uh, I really thought it was a guy on the plane next to me coming home, but my doctor said it oh. took two days, so that was Saturday of um, yeah. Austin. So. Someone there is to blame, as my as my boss. Yeah. <laughs> so when I, and when everybody I told my, there got COVID that night. So no, a lot of everybody. people. You know, it was it was like it was almost like a split. Like a lot of people got it, but a lot of people didn't get it. So it was weird. Yeah. The funny thing, I told my boss uh, after I came home and, and got all the symptoms, and I was just feeling awful. And you know, I said, "Oh, I got COVID in Austin." She said, "Those damn Texans." <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> but i'm and then like this so then i had it the first week and then i thought i was better that i got it again so i'm for the most yeah. part fully recovered but uh it kind of re-triggered my asthma which is always fun so i'm like been sucking on cough drops non-stop for like the past three weeks so yeah interesting yeah so you got I, pt got it a bunch of people i talked mm -hmm. to who are i for people who are wondering i was out that night pretty early like 7 30 or something like that because I was getting up at like four to go to the airport the next uh, morning. Uh, so that's the night that everybody got it. So yeah, lucky at me. least at least on, <laughs> at least that Saturday. That's 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 from what from my understanding of how it yeah. worked. Uh, yeah. So before okay, so before we get to um, our Austin uh, respective Austin trips in a review, uh, Justin, what have you been reading or watching? Yeah, well, I have oh, I've been listening to Brad Thor books. Uh, Brad Thor is a thriller author. Uh, let me see. I'll pull up one while we're talking that I've been enjoying. Uh, so right now I'm listening to Path of the Assassin. Okay. And I recently read, I already deleted it, another one of his that I enjoyed. <laughs> and I'm not usually so big into thriller novels, uh, and I'm actually enjoying his. So that says something like he's actually keeping me engaged. A lot of these thriller authors kind of hop around in heads, you know, omniscient style and mm -hmm. or they like spend too much time talking about random things and i just i lose track of who i'm with in the moment you know and what's going on and i'm like why why do i care but no brad thor actually does a good job of like keeping the story pushing forward and engaging so and so is uh, it like yeah. uh like a tom clancy thriller type of thing like a political espionage and it's more military thriller okay you know, okay like, yeah like if you watch the movie 13 hours or something like that um mm -hmm. like that kind of stuff okay and so yeah so i'm enjoying it it's quite fun and i've also played modern warfare 3 and that was cool and i also played spider-man 2 just started it i haven't played it through and i'm like oh no wonder this game is getting such good reviews yeah i've, I've heard a lot of people just like they just enjoy just web slinging around new york uh, <laughs> just yeah, you know, not, sure not even playing fun. the game just like hey look what i can do that's what my son does when he plays and then but this one i've noticed and maybe because i'm doing something wrong <laughs> it doesn't let me just swing around as much as uh I want like as much as my son would want anyway like the other ones Spider-Man 1, one and I think Miles Morales you could do that and it'd be fine mm -hmm. but this one like when I try to go somewhere it says nope stay on contact stay on whatever like I have work oh, to wow. do and it, like stay pushes on me mission. back around I'm like what yeah I don't wow. want to stay on mission I want to do whatever the hell I want to do <laughs> maybe because it's early on though maybe later it stops doing that okay uh, so yeah. mine is a combination uh, I can't remember all the things I've watched uh, since last we talked but I did watch um Blue Beetle, which came out on uh, oh, yeah. came out in theaters in August, and then finally came to Max a couple of weeks ago. So I watched that. It was okay. Uh, I think it it just it was a uh, kind of expected for you know a superhero movie or comic book movie. And I think I think the uh, actor playing the lead, I think he was really good. But uh, yeah. Susan Sarandon was just kind of not the best uh, villain, and I think it was a, it was a little. I think a little too, uh, leaning too much on the tropes and the cliches for me, but you know, overall yeah. it was fun. I, I don't think I would have, I think I didn't mind seeing it at home rather than in the theaters, but for sure. I think it, it hopefully uh, that's, I think that's the, Oh, there's an Aquaman movie coming out soon, but I, I was going to say, this is like the last, uh, like the, the tail end of the, the current version of all DC films. And I think well-deserved because I, I think the less said about them, the better they, I think they tried you know, maybe a solid triple, but you know, definitely no home runs yeah. for me. We were excited to watch that too. We got the kids in there and got popcorn. Within like ten minutes, two of the three kids had given up, and then our third one only lasted another like ten or fifteen minutes. Wow! And my wife and I watched it all the way through because we're like, we're we're gonna do it. I mean, we were enjoying it, but then like 
definitely the second half of the movie starts to get more cheesy and corny and you're like mm-hmm. oh, okay come on yeah i think uh, a, a few a few too, too too many stretches of the imagination or uh, uh what was yeah, it or cliches um, or yeah things like that yeah but i have been uh and i've actually have been reading i've, I've I don't get a chance to really read much apart from scripts during the day. So like before I go to bed, I'll just sit in bed and actually read a book and I'm almost done. I got this as a pack from a friend who was uh, having like a used book sale. And this is, I'll hold it up. Monster Hunter International Larry Korea. And it's fun. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nice. I, I, I'd never heard of it. I, it just, the title sounded cool. And yeah, you would probably like, is there a lot of, uh, they were talking a lot about military hardware as part of their yes. operation. They go into so much detail about guns and firearms and oh. wow. It's like overwhelming yes, at times, but that if you like monsters <laughs> and, you, and you like hunting monsters and you're going to like this one a lot. Uh, yeah. So. I've, uh, I've heard great things about that author and book. And okay. I think he was sitting next to me at a panel. I was at the other, uh, in Vegas one year. And I was oh, like, oh, wow. Korea. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we should have we should have him on the show. <laughs> yeah, it was cool, to too, because the panelists like started talking about me and pointed me out in the audience. And I was like, hey. And I was like, what's up, Larry? <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, Excellent. Good times. Anyway, so I just speak- downloaded a Monster Hunter game, too. So I'll have to check that oh, wow. out. I'll report back on it sometime. And, yeah, cool. Read the book and compare notes. So, oh, I didn't realize yeah, it was so. a game. for. I thought you were just like, there was just happened to be another game no, no, called. No. It's, it's, yeah, it's, based- it's not based on that book, but it's oh, okay. very much a Monster Hunter book. I mean, sorry, Monster Hunter game. Uh-huh. So maybe it'll feel similar in some way. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? All right. So speaking of panels, uh, let us talk about our respective Austin experiences now. Do you want to go first? Because you, as you know, the listeners and viewers of the show, well know you've been there many times before. So, so how did this uh, one? How did this one stack yeah. up? But also, you you attended as not a, only as a writer, but you were a panelist as well. Yeah, yeah. So that's fun. This is my third year being a panelist there, and I always enjoy that aspect of it. Of course, <laughs> it was a so to give the high level overview first. I'd say my overall impression was I love Austin. It's always great. Uh, it's always, you know, the people are always cool. I was hanging out. Uh, Richard Dane Scott was there. He's a cool guy. My other buddy, Richard, you know, Kevin, you, every, everybody with PT, they were all there and uh, it was great. So uh, some downsides were, you know, little things like there weren't as many parties this year, or like my like good side parties. It was, mm-hmm. They just did a skybox lounge thing again. And then uh, uh, the barbecue, you know, you didn't make it to the barbecue, did you? No, because I went oh. to the uh, that other thing, the one with the really long lines for drinks. Oh, <laughs> yeah, the barbecue was weird. Like we got there nice and early, like I always recommend people do. And already a lot of people were there nice and early as well. So I was like, wow. OK, everybody's catching but it was on. also raining, too. So that didn't help. <laughs> It didn't start raining though until about half an hour later. Mm-hmm. So when we got there, Shane Black was there in line with us, talked to us a little bit. So that oh, was cool. cool. And then, um, but like, it was weird. They like funnel you through these gates. And then we were like, okay, so the gates are going to let us out into this big open area where we can relax. Nope. The whole time you were just in this cage animal zoo type situation oh, and like no room to move around or anything. And so it was, uh, it was really weird. Um, that'd be my, my big uh, note to fix for next year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How about you? What's your overall, your high level? Uh, okay. So uh, people probably know this was my first time going. I was also thrilled to be able to go. Uh, my script was a second rounder. So that was a really a nice touch to it. Uh, overall, I, I had a really nice time. Um, I liked it a lot. I think my favorite part really was the the networking and just really getting to not just meet people, you know, because you you know you make conversation while you're waiting in line, of which there are many. Uh, but it's also I got to meet a lot of people I only knew online. So like people I've interacted with on Twitter and Facebook and and you know the writing groups and that sort of thing. And uh, a lot of it involved just hanging out at the Driscoll, which uh, got to be a little noisy, a little uh, loud sometimes, but overall not too bad. But um, I mean, I got to connect with a friend of mine from Australia who uh, we've been in touch for years and this is the first time we'd ever met. And like he was like, one of, one of the things that was really cool that he was going to go to one of the screenings um, one night and we and I, I w- wasn't interested, but I said, well, I'll walk with you because I'm just going to, you know, I'll, I'll walk you there and then I'll you know, go grab dinner or go back to my room or whatever. And so we're walking and chatting and we get to where the theater was and the line was really like around the block. And he's like, I do not want to wait in line right now. And I said, oh, do, you, do you want to come to dinner? I said, sure. And um, we had missed out on the barbecue, the one you were talking about, and didn't really feel like, and we went to uh, the one that was on, oh God, I can't remember the name of the street, the one that leads like to the Capitol. 
Congress, Congress Avenue. That was it. Uh, and there was a line for that one and we didn't feel like that. So we just kind of, you know, hopped onto Yelp and what's around. We found this great fried chicken place. It was like a couple of blocks away and we went there and it was really quiet. I mostly locals, but may have been a handful of people from the conference, but you know, we just had a, a really, the food was fantastic and really reasonably priced. Uh, and we just had a really nice chat and just, you know, it was just a, a con, a contributing to the overall positive experience in Austin. So just yeah. that sort of thing. Um, and I think my biggest, uh, another takeaway for me was that a lot of the panels I attended uh, were really kind of like, here's how, like about advice about breaking into the industry. And I've been doing this a long time. And a lot of, I mean, I didn't mind going to the panels, but a lot of the information they were talking about is stuff I'd heard so many times before. And right. I don't regret I'll going to the spot, panels. Yeah. Yeah, I don't regret going to the panels, but I don't really need to do that anymore. So yeah. I, uh, I'm not going to be able to go next year. So probably like 25 or 26. Uh, so, But the next time I go, I'll be able to just kind of like tailor my panel attending to things that interest me. Because like you and I sat in on the tent pole one. That was pretty cool. And there, I, know I went to another one about deconstructing the action film. That was really cool as well. But yeah, you know, I think uh, what's also really nice is that there's such a variety of panels and topics that you can attend and see that, you know, a lot of it I think you're going to really enjoy, but you really have to have a good idea of what it is you expect to get out of it. Because uh, a lot of people were there just to, I think, you know, suck up information. And, uh, you know, that, that kind of helped. But like I said, a lot of the stuff I'd heard in some of those panels, it was, wasn't anything I hadn't heard before. So, right. yeah, yeah, sometimes that's fine. Like uh, I went to the Michael Arndt one and that was awesome. And yeah, I don't think he said anything different than what we've heard before, but he was mm -hmm. saying it in some fun ways that you're like, oh yeah, okay, this is, I could go revise my whole first act right now based on what he just said. <laughs> and, and it makes you think about things that you just haven't really been giving much focus on your brain lately, you know, mm -hmm. if it's like, you know, an important point you've learned, but you just kind of push it to the back of your head because like, yeah, it doesn't apply. But then as you start writing more and more scripts, occasionally you'll get somewhere something isn't quite working and you go, Oh, there is that part in the first act that could be. So I, I had that very, that mind uh, explosion while I was there and that was good. <laughs> and then also the uh, Megan LaFoe, uh, LaFoe, how do you say her name? She oh yeah. Megan LaFoe, great. I think. Yeah. LaFoe. Yeah. She had a great chat talk as well. And I enjoyed those, but as a panelist, uh, I will give my rundown on that. That was really fun because so I mostly just did the round table. I mean, I only did the round table. I went to some of the video game panels and they were very packed, uh, standing room only. So that was sure. good to see. I'm glad that like people are actually getting in on that. Cause I went in 2015 when they were just testing out adding a game track mm -hmm. and there was interest, but I don't think it was that level of interest, but people were all like, Oh, this is great. Cause uh, you know, we haven't heard this kind of stuff before. We like to, you know, we already heard all that other stuff, but this is all new. Uh, so they really enjoyed it. So I did the round table. And there was a mix. There were some people who were very enthusiastic and wanted to figure out how to get into games. And some people were just like, I don't know why I'm here. I'm just here to say hi and figure out what you're doing. Sure. <laughs> so that was interesting. But then afterwards, I got to hang out with, you know, it was like a nice little high school reunion moment, you know, some former Telltale people go oh, okay. to dinner and have a good time. And and so that was, that's where like the value always of these things always comes in, you know, when, when you're mm -hmm. having those moments and you're sitting there like you, I'm your fried chicken and your buddy. And you're like, this is, this is great. Like it's stuff, you know, uh, especially as a parent with little kids at home, you don't do too often. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate. Yeah. So what, yeah. One of the things that was really cool for me is that, um, cause, uh, I wasn't sure if I'd be able to make it, but I got, uh, Paul Reiser was doing a, uh, was him cause he has co-written a movie. I think it's coming out soon. And so I wanted to really hear him talk. And so I, I wasn't sure if I'd be able to make it, but I got there like two minutes before it started and I got to the room and he was actually in the back, like right by the entrance to the room. So I got to meet him really quick, you know, shake his hand, you know, nice to meet you. Love your work. Love your writing. He's like, oh, thanks. It's really nice. So I sat down and he uh, brought up his co-writer during the panel because they first they talked to him about his stand up and about being an aliens and mad about you. But then they wanted to talk about the movie. So he brought up his co-writer who was in the audience. And so they're talking. And afterward, I tweeted about, you know, seeing him talk. And it turns out I didn't even realize this. I'm connected to the co-writer on Twitter. And so he had seen that I had tweeted about attending the panel. And he said, oh, you know, it's great that you were there. And so uh, 
would and we tried to coordinate just a meeting in person, but it didn't work out. So we actually had a Zoom call uh, like two weeks ago. So I, I was over COVID, so that was nice. So I wasn't hacking and wheezing the whole time. But it was just really nice to talk to him, and he's a hell of a guy. And I got to get a little more information about how we became involved in it and a little more about him. And he was asking me about my stuff and it was just really nice. And I think that uh, kind of boils down to what the Austin experience was, just really getting to meet all these other writers, because as we yeah. discussed, you know, you're waiting in line for so, so much time yeah. that uh, it, it just makes sense to, you know, if there's someone in front of you or behind you, you don't know. You just, you know, just, you know, say, hey, I'm, you know, hey, I'm Paul, you know, if, and where are you from? And like, and, and tell, tell me about your script. And people are more than happy to talk about their scripts and they'll ask you about yours. And one thing yeah. I will say about that, I was, uh, we were, I was waiting for one of the panels to start and I asked the guy next to me about his script, but he also, he didn't really understand that you should really be quick and efficient in describing and pitching uh, your script. Cause he went on for like three and a half minutes, like trying almost like laying out yeah, the yeah. entire story. And I was trying so hard to make sure my face did not register. I don't want to hear yeah. any more of this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tell me more. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. Okay. It's not like, and, and then what yeah. happens, but, right. uh, but for the most part, uh, a lot of people were really cool about it and when they asked me about my script i got to tell them and you know just all what there's always oh that sounds really cool i'd love to read that sort of thing so yeah yeah <laughs> that's cool yeah uh, were there any big uh celeb sightings or handshakes that you want well to brag about? i was gonna say the only two that i because uh, paul riser was one and then right after that i ran into you and walking and i've told this to several people so you know we're standing on the corner and you said, hey, look, there's Shane Black. I said, where? And he's like a guy crossing the street, across the street, the guy in the yellow shoes. And I was like, oh, yeah. my God. And I had six seconds to get across <laughs> the street because I did not want to get run yeah. over by a car. So I ran over. And I said, hey, I'll see you later. And I, I ran and was was right there, like just as he got to the corner. I said, hey, Mr. Black, you know, big fan. Love your work. Love your writing. And he's like, oh, thanks. And he looked at my badge. Uh, Paul, he said, oh. Yeah, uh, you're having a nice time at the festival. I said, yeah, it's it's uh, it's really great. It's my first time here. Oh, that's really good. Oh, hey, your second rounder. Congratulations. That's fantastic. I said, okay, girl. Okay, bye. And so that was it. It was like you know, thirteen seconds yeah. tops. But right. but you know, the fact that I got to meet him and and you were there in line with him, that's really cool. But I, it was just you know, it's a great experience, and you know, it's something I'll remember for the rest of my life. Uh, I'm sure yeah. he will too. Uh, but um, yeah, yeah that, that, that was. Okay. Yeah, no, I was gonna say that was, you know, I didn't really I don't think I got to really meet uh, anyone of like that, that level of writing fame. But I mean, yeah. uh, a few other people who I already knew, but uh, are kind of well known within the writing community. But yeah, it was it was just really great. Yeah. yeah, it's cool meeting these people who are like legends in our minds, because and it's like, oh, they are real people. And it is it is kind of doable, maybe. Mm -hmm. or was once upon a time anyway <laughs> unfortunately scott rosenberg wasn't there this year he's usually a staple of the austin film festival uh and some of the other big dogs but i got to meet er uh, dan erickson who's the showrunner of severance okay. the apple tv show that everybody loves right now uh so that was cool and then my wife and i were working at a coffee shop here and he walked in uh like a week and a half after austin oh wow and so i was like dan and he was like hey and we had a little <laughs> brief chat there too uh so it was nice so like you never know when you're gonna meet these people again and so it's kind of this nice ongoing you know like year after year you see them you say hi you talk eventually maybe it leads somewhere crazy who knows they remember you they think oh that one person who's into bagpipe playing or whatever and then uh, <laughs> wow that is something together. i remember yeah well i used to play the bagpipes uh, but i don't right now so it okay. wouldn't be much help <laughs> well it, it was interesting that a couple of people like actually a friend of mine who hasn't been there this is a, a probably maybe about a week ago so he said so if you were considering going what are some of the things that you learned uh as a result and because like some people said like should i get the producer badge or should i just get the conference badge and my thing was that i I got the producer badge because, first of all, because I hadn't been there before, and I got it right. about a year ago, Black Friday last year, because they had such a great price on it. Um, and I don't think the producer badge is good, but, but only to a certain extent. Like, if you're not going to go to all of the affiliated parties with it, that yeah. I don't think you really need it. Because I heard a lot of people saying, like, you know, you know, first year I got the producer badge, but I didn't need it. So I ended up just getting the conference badge, which I think is like two or three hundred dollars cheaper. So, yeah. I mean, it gets you into a lot of the same things. Uh, There's a lot of but, fried chicken right there. 
<laughs> yeah, that is a, well, God, that's a lot of fried chicken. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so if I if I the next time I go, I'll most likely do a conference badge. Um, and I know you you did it uh, Airbnb. Not, oh yeah 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 yeah. It was a kind of Airbnb. It's really just like a hotel, but it's I think somebody owns all of them even because they, they have like a maid service that goes through and oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, it's like a bunch of apartments kind of right across uh, from the Driscoll. So it's like right there and okay. I think it's like three something a night, but because there were four of us, it ended up being like about a hundred a night. Oh, that's pretty uh, good. Which was not bad for location. Yeah. Yeah, I I stayed at the whatever the hotel it was the Aloft, so it's like just down the street from the Driscoll, you know, like a like 10 second walk. And, you know, it was a single room it was, and it was perfectly located for me. And I think because they also had a special uh, festival rate. So my thing yeah. was like two, like two thirty a night and not too bad. I was there for four nights and, and, yeah. and yeah, there's, and if, I think if you really just kind of like plan ahead and know what you're, you know, what, know what you have to work with. I think it's it's really easy to work with. And also what's great is that so much of the festival is so concentrated in that area that even if something's not that close, it's not that far away anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of walking in hills though for people who aren't prepared for that. <laughs> Those are not <laughs> hills. Walks. Those are not hills. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe living in LA has changed you. I don't know. Okay, that's yeah. what else. That's what I will say. So um <laughs> are you pl are you planning to go next year? Uh, yeah, most likely. Uh, somebody's asking if I'm going to buy a badge, and so the last two years in a row, I bought a badge, and then but I thought they'd be a panelist, and they were supposed to refund, and then it didn't work out. And oh. one of the years, and so I'm like, ah, oh, well, this year I'll just wait. And then what I think I'll do to your note about producer's badge, also, um, yeah, I probably won't wait until I start hearing people say, "Wow, the barbecue was so amazing," then I might buy the badge of the year after that, like the producers. <laughs> but uh, without certain things, like if it's at the sky, it's all the parties with the skybox, and nobody really likes the skybox, and the barbecue wasn't that great and so what else do you got you got like the brunch but that's eh. yeah you but I, I left so. before the brunch yeah because yeah, my my people, flight left probably like half an hour before the brunch started so that wasn't a, an option yeah. for me so like to your point yeah i might even just buy the the lower badge than that the whatever the weekend badge or something like okay. just show up and hang out at the driscoll and or not even yeah i went one year and i didn't even buy a badge and it wasn't bad <laughs> it felt a little weird because i was like it was like where's your badge where's your name tag and i was like exactly, oh, exactly. justin what's up <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah i mean and that's a nice way to find other people too like oh you're with the bed you're with the conference you're with the conference hey uh so either yeah. i'll have to buy a badge or just get a shirt that says don't worry i'm one of you <laughs> uh, <laughs> i think that's like you that. that's even creepier um yeah yeah because when <laughs> I, I was not an alien mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah i was, I was talk, talking with my uh friend from australia because he he's been there a couple of times before and he thinks this this year was probably the last year he'll attend. It's because it's you know uh -huh. he's coming from across the other side of the planet. Uh, yeah. And and I uh, said I I'm going to probably take next year off just because of the you know really right now it's just about the cost. But um, yeah. And he said actually what you should do is you should the next time you come you should really you should only come if you're going to be uh, they're going to be screening a film that you wrote or they're going to talk be talking about a film that you wrote and like. I like the way you think. So <laughs> so we'll see what we can make do to make that happen. I like um, going just having fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was thinking about your question about like any lessons learned. And I was like, no, I think like always, I, I always get the most out of it after those evenings of just like spent hanging out with buddies. And like mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times people like Shane or Dan or whoever will come by. Oh, who else did we meet? Oh, we met Damon Lindelof oh, and cool. uh, those kind of, you know, and they'll come around they'll say hi. And that's, really inspiring and it's uh also fun and also who knows like two years from now you'll walk into the the room to interview to be one of the staff on their writer's room or who, whatever else situation and they might be like oh i remember you from austin you're cool what's up you know so <laughs> it, it can't hurt in that regard uh but um I'm trying to think of any lessons learned uh food you know uh, velvet taco is pretty good and it's convenient <laughs> it was it was uh and and mostly just yeah making i went to one event this year where i didn't really talk to anybody because i was just feeling like Bleh, you know uh -huh. and like i should have had a coffee right before i went went or something whatever to keep you going so i think that's the key is either schedule a nap time or make sure that you're always putting yourself out there because then i was like damn i just wasted two hours because yeah. i could have been talking to people and and then the panel that i went to that one wasn't that exciting i won't name names because it was like a, a conversation with type thing with a celebrity okay. person you know <laughs> but uh yeah so i'd say like you know don't i would I wouldn't just go to the ones that are like that kind of stuff. I would go to the ones that are like very relevant and very 
like Michael Arndt, you know, like he's a big dog. Damon Lindelof's talk with Dan Erickson, they had a dual thing. Mm-hmm. Dual thing. And uh, that was really cool. And really, so, so it's all about like trying to figure out which events are worth your time because what are they going to give you? Are they going to give you inspiration? Are they going to teach you something? Probably not. If you've been listening to our podcast, you know most of what they're going to say, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So yeah, trying to think what you're going to get out of it and then making sure you find those good food places or have a bunch of protein bars in your bag. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I also want to touch on one of the things you talked about because I mean, I, I mean, people who were there were all over social media, like, oh, here we are at the, at this place and this place and doing this thing. Right, and right. some people, some people like, you know, they were going out like to bars or whatever at like 11 o'clock at night. And, you know, I get up at three 30 in the morning for work. I can, my body is not used to staying up late. And so I just couldn't, yeah. I mean, like by 10 o'clock, 10 30, I'm like, Oh God, I just want to go to bed. And so I did. And so all these people, and but then they all would get up and I, you could kind of see like who was out really late until the, yeah. uh, the, the, the night before. Cause they're just dragging in the morning, even with the coffee in their hand, they're like, Oh God, I didn't get to bed yeah, until four. It's sure. like, Oh my God, how, how, how do you do that? That was me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Not me. <laughs> definitely, definitely not this guy here. But um, yeah. I would say, yeah, that one of the things I kind of made a point of uh, making myself do that I was really nervous before I went that I hate when I go to a party and I, and everybody's engaged in conversation and I don't know, and I don't know anybody. So I just feel like even more of an outsider that I was determined I was not going to let that happen. So anytime I was like in a line or in, you know, in a, in a room waiting for a panel to start and I really didn't know anybody, I would just talk to the person next to me. Hey, you know, I'm just, I'm just networking. And then, you know, and just, you yeah. know, being friendly yeah. oh, and right. <laughs> yeah. And so many, and so many people were like so receptive to that. Cause I think they wanted to have yeah. the same kind of experience. Like, Hey, somebody's interested in talking to me. And yeah. it was great. I met so many great people. Like I said, I already knew a lot of people there, uh, but it was great to meet just so many people for the first time. And again, p- yeah, people just like talking about, you know, they're, st- they may not be talking, they may, they may not be comfortable talking about themselves, but they like to talk about their work that, no, no, tell me about your script. And Hopefully they go into their effective but brief pitch or, you know, here, here's my, here's my sales pitch about it. And, and they ask you about yours and it's just, you know, and you, you, and yeah. the next time you, next time you see them out on the sidewalk, Hey, it's you, <laughs> that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. I would say follow up too. This is one thing that I've totally failed at this year. It's already been how long now? A month. And I uh, it's been a month. A single follow up, man. Oh, oh wow. On that. Oh yeah. I, <laughs> I know. Like, wait a second. Oh, oh I said one. I said, I did send one and it was two days ago. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So uh, one of the things that like people are like, oh, should I bring business cards? I brought uh, physical cards because, uh, you know, that's, I like them. And people were doing like, you scan a QR code on their card on your phone, and then it puts the information into your contacts. But, you know, a couple of days later, I don't remember the person's name. Yeah. So I can, I yeah, can't dig. Them, right? Yeah. Like, how can I dig through my contacts if I don't remember your name? So I think the QR code, yeah, it's convenient because you're not lugging cards around, but the card is a physical thing. I mean, I still have some of the cards here, like some of the people that I met. And a lot of people were doing it this year, actually, surprisingly, because in previous years I had brought cards and people kind of made fun of me because nobody else did. Uh, But yeah, a lot of people I noticed were this year. And I agree with you. But what you do in that situation is you send them a message right away and be like, hey, it was great to meet you at the place, blah, blah. And then later you can go to your messages and be like, all right, who did I message? Oh, yeah, there was that person I met at the place. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, that's true. But <laughs> at the time, time, at the time, but you know, because I'm in standing in the lot in yeah. the uh, bar at the Driscoll, I'm not going to like suddenly wait. I got it. okay. Thanks for this. I got to text you really quick. But I yeah. did, and what was also really cool, and it's the last thing I'll say, um, that this was Saturday night. Um, so I was at the Driscoll, just talking with some friends, and uh, one of them had to go talk to somebody else, and so it was a, a momentary pause. And I happened to see two guys over at one of the little uh, tables. And they had a trophy, and I was like, "Oh!" And I was like, "Oh, I got you know, was, you know, oh, congratulations!" And like, yeah. like, "Oh, what, what did you win for?" And they won the best drama, so like, they won the whole nice. thing. And as and so, and I said, "Oh, oh, what's your script about?" And they said, and "I said, oh, that sounds really cool. Um, you know, could do you have a card?" And they did. So, so here's their card. Uh, the script's called T minus zero. It's it's a like the investigation about the Challenger disaster, yes, the space shuttle oh, Challenger cool. disaster. And I just read it a couple yeah. of days ago, and I can see why it won. It was it's nice. really it's if you liked uh, Chernobyl 
on HBO Max. Yeah. It's kind of like that, but it's about the shuttle disaster and all of the the investigation uh-huh. and stuff about it. And I sent him an email. I said, this was really great. And I, I tweeted about it. I had so many people say, oh, God, I want to read it. And I wasn't comfortable sending people the script. So I just said, okay, well, here's the emails for the two writers. Ask them. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I've actually wanted to write some of these kind of scripts for a while now, like some of those like based on real stories. And uh, it's kind of nice because you have a grounded uh, element that yeah, keeps you grounded instead of me where I ended up going out and writing sci-fi or fantasy on accident. Sure. And also you have an element that gets people interested already because they're like, oh, that thing that actually happened. Oh, tell me more. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. that's that's awesome. That's smarter than um, cool. Yeah. Well, anything else we want to add about Austin? I I don't think so, but you know, I will say in 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 summary, I just you know, I had a really great time. I'm glad I went. Uh, look forward to doing it again. At, I I can't make it an annual thing, but I do look forward to uh, the next time I go, and hopefully, uh, it won't be as uh, wet or humid. Yeah, I would like to go this year. I will say I hope to. I uh, but it depends on the new gig. As a, as you mentioned at the beginning, I have a new sure. gig. I don't think I'm supposed to talk about it, so I just won't yet. <laughs> Not a problem. Someday I will when we have like a big announcement or something that I want to share. But uh, people who know me on LinkedIn could just look it up and see what it is too. So, okay. uh, yeah. But but if I can make it, I'll be at Austin next year. Uh, otherwise, I'll be uh, maybe here hanging out with you, talking about how I wish I was there. <laughs> well, I think my, my thing will be okay. Let's see that there's what four, five days. I'll just you know every time I look at Twitter, like just boom, all all this yeah. stuff from Austin. <laughs> So I, and that's what I expect. And that's perfectly fine with me. I do not mind taking a year off. Yeah. 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 It's good to keep the network alive though. I mean, I I missed like five years and then I came back and everybody that I knew from five years before was like, Hey, we're just hanging out again. So I don't think it hurts to take one year off. There you go. There you go. (laughs) All right. Well, it was great chatting about all that. Um, Any last words of advice or things we want to leave the audience with today? I don't think so. Uh, we will kind of like uh, end the show saying that because uh, things are a little different now for our scheduling. So yeah. we probably will not be able to have as many episodes. We're really going to see what we can do. Sometimes uh, we're hoping it can be both of us. Sometimes it might just be me. But, you know, that, again, right. it's a work in progress. But um, yeah. hang tight. Uh, you know, they will not be as uh, being released as regularly as they used to be. But we're going to see what we can do about it. Yeah, a little sporadic here and there, but that's okay. We still love you all. Oh, more than anything. (laughs) We wouldn't be here without you guys. Yes. All right, guys. Well, thank you again. This has been the Creative Brighton Life podcast. I'm Justin Sloan. You can find my books on Amazon. And I'm Paul Zeidman. You can check out my screenwriting blog, MaximumZ.blog. I'm also still on the thing. I'm not, I'm going to call it Twitter at Maximum underscore Z. Uh, you can check out my books on Amazon. I'm also on Instagram at Pez Screenwriting. Like you he said, he's Justin. I'm Paul. This has been the Creative Writing Life Podcast. Thanks for listening. Stay safe, stay healthy, and most importantly, go write something. <laughs>